County Cork, and I'm here with Cork Lally on a Sunday night. And <laughs> I'm going to write this time. Okay, Cork, let's go. Tell me about what you're doing and what you're bringing here to Connors on Lent. And so I moved I moved to house after last March. Uh, is up there again and in December. And so uh, over there one night I had the whole run of the place and uh, the Great stuff. Just went to go to the bathroom, the ladies' toilets, and who should I bump into? Oh, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Brennan, how are you doing? Good. Thank your you. performance tonight? I am. Are you excited? Yes. Oh. How was your trip from Dublin? It or Tullamore, uh, should I say? It was very interesting. Tullamore to Cork is always an interesting, uh, exhilarating ride. Ooh, was that what happened? Mm. <laughs> who was driving? Backseat, baby. Yay! So tell me about your stuff. What are you doing tonight? What are you bringing? Um, I'm going to do uh, five pieces and there's going to be a mix of stuff that I've done before um, and I'm aiming for sort of short and punchy but I also do pieces that I hope try to get people to uh, do a double take. So yeah, I like if people do a double take at the, the punchline, at the end, at the last line, the closing yeah. couplet, that's job done. For so me. loaded with like sarcasm or intrigue? Not really, no, I, no I, I, I deal in whimsy. I deal oh. almost exclusively in whimsy. Very good. Is that a joke? <laughs> no, I'm dead. Are you serious? serious? <laughs> Come on. No, really? whimsy, I like the everyday, the mundane, the, the, the minor, the minute detail. That's what, that's what gets me off. Yeah. Oh, cool. Mm. Sounds very sexy. It could be. Yeah. Although it's cold, so maybe not so much. Oh, okay. So maybe we'll just go with that. Whimsy. Whimsy. Bordering. <laughs> sexy. Whimsy slash, you know, really offensive. Oh, okay. I can't wait. Bring it on. Okay, okay guys. How can we get you? Are you on Facebook? I'm on or? Facebook, yeah. Um, and there's a few things on YouTube. And I run the scene of the rhyme. Uh, mm -hmm. Every month in Tullamore with Dave Malahan and David Hines and well, it was initially Cormac's baby, but uh, wow. he's behind the camera now, so he can't say anything. She's been adopted. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, seen it arrive every month. Tullamore, check it out on Facebook. Okay, end of the month kind of thing. Last Friday usually, yeah. Okay, so Friday nights are good. Friday so if they're in Tullamore, it's not conflicting with Cork, obviously. Yeah, right. great stuff. All right, looking forward to seeing you later on. Thanks right. for talking to us. Thanks, Marion. Okay. Very exciting here in Comedies of Lep in County Cork, and I'm joined by the absolutely fabulous Mr. Dave Malhan. How are you doing? I'm great, Marion. Thanks for having me. Should I call you Mally or? Yeah, are I've, we been, good? I've been called Mally since I was four years old, so hey, mm. but David's, David's good as well. Oh, cool. Tell me about what you're bringing to the table tonight. It would be offensive poetry, <laughs> mainly. Okay. All right, okay. Uh, and there'll be some drug references. And <laughs> That's what you usually want to write about, especially at a, at a, at a live venue. I like to challenge the, the audience. Okay, so you're quite a delicate little flower, really. Yes, yes. Well, no, I used to, I used, I used to write about different things, but now I'm just trying to make people laugh and shock them, and that's basically what I'm trying to do now. Is it working? Some nights it works, and uh, some nights I have to look for the emergency exits, and uh, no, it never gets that bad. Doesn't it? No. Well, this is a good venue, isn't it? Yeah. Is this yeah. your first time here? It's absolutely beautiful. The mezzanine level and everything is just, it's out, outside, and I like the Pink Floyd references. I think it's, I think it's amazing. Great stuff. So I'm looking forward to hearing you later. Right. Thanks for chatting to us. Thank you. Thank you, Marion. You're welcome. Yeah, my name is Colin Clally. I'm your MC for this evening. And we are going to welcome to the stage here uh, Richard Brennan and David Malham and myself from the Tullamore Rhymers Club with the scene of the rhyme. So please put your hands together for David Malham and Richard Brennan. Good evening, Connollys. Good evening. Over there. It's a great pleasure to be here. My name is Richard Brennan. Uh, I'm originally from Dublin, but I've been uh, living in Tullamore for the last 10 years. And five of those ten years I've known these reprobates here. Uh, we were members of a writing club, we used to meet in a friend's front room and we'd, uh, we'd, we'd read each other's stuff, you know, to each other for an audience and things very quickly progressed to slams, provincial, national, picnics. So it's been a roller coaster the last couple of years, a bit like Dave Hines driving on the way down tonight. Hey! 
So yeah, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to kick off with a piece which has no title. You'll understand why in a moment. Knackers and niggers. <laughs> Faggots and Jews. Culchies, West Brits. Gringos too. Deadbeats and dickheads, bitches and wimps. Feckers and gals and spanners and gimps. Scumbags and wankers, bimbos and chavs, weirdos and zeros and papists and pals. Packies and ragheads, slopes and gooks, chinks, charlies, spades, spooks. Yanks and yids, krauts and frogs, mix, paddies, tigs, dogs, airheads and arseholes, dagos and spicks, tossers and gobshites and ask me bollocks. Dykes and scroungers, losers and freaks. Here ends my thesis on inclusivity. In the interests of fairness and equality, I do hope I've offended everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Next to the stage, sorry. Thank you very much. Mr. David Mullen. It's a pleasure to be here in Lep tonight. Uh, absolute pleasure. I usually write comedy poems, and that's what I usually do, but I'm going to start tonight with more of an observation. Fifteen years ago, during the Celtic Tiger, I sold building supplies and engineering supplies, and that was my trade, and then everything got fucked up. So I wrote this poem as kind of a reflection to back to, to, to today, compared to now, and it's called, Where is all the cocaine gone? <laughs> Long gone the halcyon days of the building boom bender, and the South American cartel and the money we would send her. From the politicians to the doctors to the overpaid bankers. From council houses to the Fox Rock wankers. Ireland was a blizzard of Peruvian snow, and with each eight bolt boat, the ego it did grow. Rich we were back then, and now we are broke. Only the select few now can afford a nose full of coke. Thank you. <laughs> uh, this is a poem about the, about the Irish Gardaí. And we're, we live in a very, very small country here, so everyone is either related to uh, knows or uh, knows someone who's related to a uh, guard. Our guardy are also unarmed, which I think is a very, a very proud thing for me for Ireland. So that the guardy have to use their wits and their bravery, not always at the same time, but you know to defuse situations. And uh, the title of this poem is ACAP, and it comes from you know, the tattoo that people used to have years ago. This AC, you know, this ACAP on their knuckles, which meant all cops are pigs. But this is called All Cops Are People. They're not all bad eggs, the statement is true. A couple are sound, maybe even a few. I see some outside topaz with ham and cheese baps, their coleslaw baguettes and their Thai chicken wraps. <laughs> and some drive around like their general pattern, they're fast with the mace, fast throw with the baton. There's some trying to help the unfortunate guys, and there's others who turn a helpful blind eye. There's some who protect us from pedophile porn, some know they'll be cops from the moment they're born. They recruit within Kerry in mountainous towns. They leave meat at the bottom and see who comes down. <laughs> and others join up and get trained down in tip and some nick the cocaine that gets raided off ships. And some drive around and protect RTDs and met some at the picnic. They were mangled on ease. <laughs> we have one here in traffic thinks he's wired up. He'd lock up his own for stripes on his shirt. There's some who control and license our guns, use their handcuffs for extracurricular funds. And a handful are helpful, and a heap are a hindrance, and some of them would ride you like a scene from Deliverance. And some raid the pubs you're trying out at half three, and others will join you if the drink is on Connolly's. <laughs> and others do nothing, keep their families fed, believe they have made a difference when they lie down in bed. And some are in bands, and some are in choirs, and some listen in on your telephone wires. <laughs> and some for no tax and have you reported, and some wave you on and tell you to sort it. <laughs> and then some wake you up in the darkest of nights to identify bodies that no longer have life. And some are first to the scenes of the most tragic collisions, and some can't sleep at night from the sight of these visions. And some try to console, some are drawn the dole, some will take you to court for not paying the tolls. They have their own bank and low interest loans, and they drive around the country house chatting on phones. <laughs> I applied once, thought this was the life I was after, but I dropped acid the next week when I made standing rafters. And it broadened my mind, but I then failed the medical. I would think of it now that she was back in hysterical. <laughs> A few rules should be made to the way they're recruited. Life experience, for example, a point often mooted. Each applicant should be at least 25, 
and have verification of having at least once got the ride. <laughs> and don't live with their mammies and travel a bit and tried some new things and smoked up some shit. And don't brainwash the teenagers straight out of school and apply the grey area to the obvious fools. And concentrate on the robbers, the scumbags, the rapists, the corrupt politicians and the paedophile papists. All cops are not pigs, but some are pure swine. And for now, at least poetry still isn't a crime. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I just think we're a bit like Ronan O'Gara here, we're a revolving door. Not a popular joke in Cork, no. I know I like Raj. <clears throat> uh, this next one is called Past Life, because I do think about past lives, you know. And um, I don't know if this happens. Oh, by the way, this one <laughs> completely hinges on the last line, so hopefully I'll make it that far. Uh, I don't know if this happens to other people, but uh, it happens to me with alarming frequency. Complete and utter strangers often come up to me, looking for directions usually. It's almost always in the street. I see them coming before they see me. I can sixth sense the question even before they say, excuse me. Sometimes in cars they pull up alongside. I flinch just an inch as down the window slides. He leans across, I lean in. A grimace of inquiry, I point with my chin. Or pull back a second, do my best frown, wonder how to tell the guy, fuck, he's miles from here now. My beloved thinks it's funny, she often remarks that somewhere on my forehead must be stamped a question mark. Cause it's not just at home, this happens overseas. <laughs> On the streets of Hamburg, a polite inquiry. Bitte entschuldigen voice, St. Pauli. <laughs> there must be something in my face, or the way I carry myself, my gait, that's irresistible to those who find themselves astray on minor roads, hunched and swearing at the wheel, at the co-pilot in the passenger seat. And I'm reminded suddenly of a story my mother told me about the first time my parents ever argued publicly. Lost in the circus at Piccadilly, on honeymoon in London in the mid 1960s, and Dow wouldn't stop to ask for assistance, to admit he was adrift on the underground system. But they must have had someone, right? Eventually. Wouldn't it be gas if that someone turned out to be me? Thanks. <laughs> Last year, the Irish government changed the constitution so man can marry man and woman can marry woman, and fucking about time. But did, but did they go far enough? I was a, I get a lot of trains, and I get the train from Tullamore to Dublin quite often, and like usually it's field of cows, fields of sheep, fields of cows, fields of sheep. And then one day outside uh, Newbridge, I, the, the train stopped, and there was one cow and one sheep in the middle of this field. And I was thinking, Fucking hell. Imagine if they're fucking friends. And then I was thinking, imagine if they're more than friends. And then I wrote this, this is the cow and the sheep. <laughs> After many years of sharing the same field, an interspecies love began to yield. From running in the grass and enjoying a joke, to scratching their hides and learning to smoke. A proper relationship with passionate feelings befriended. What happened in the bushes was not what God intended. <laughs> Their best friends knew the chicken and the horse. Of this forbidden union, they said nothing, of course. Then the pig found out and raised the alarm and squealed to the man who was running the farm. Cow and sheep were butchered to alleviate the shame. Chicken and horse knew the pig was to blame. Then late one night when the animals were in bed, they put on balaclavas and sneaked into the shed and took turns firing bullets into his fucking head. <laughs> mine was sublime. How's yours? Here's mine. It all starts with the sleeve, 30.43 centimeters, uh, centimeters square. You hold it and stare at the picture, the photo, the cartoon illustration. The sleeve notes and track list arouse anticipation of the opening bars of the opening tune, but first, I must take you back to a room. It was dark, it was seedy, 
a musical womb, two flights of step above Grafton Street. You'd flick all morning through racks of LPs till you come across something. <gasps> I'll take it. It's mine. The Wall by Pink Floyd. Only 2 99 Then it's back home on the bus and round to my mates with my latest purchase. No time to waste. You slip the disc from its paper sleeve, study the label like a favourite team. Island, Atlantic, Polydor, EMI, CBS, Vertigo. Then you hook the shimmering cut on the spindle. Down at eye level, you poise the fine needle so it drops and hisses and settles itself. And the sound had a smell, ladies and gentlemen. It's freshly baked bread. Riffs and percussion, keyboards and drums, guitar notes that wobble and a voice full of sun. And you're sitting on the floor, nodding your head, indelibly stamped, incredibly stoned. Though neither beer nor jelly roll, just a kid after all, a youth, callow, virgin, emerging. Thanks. Some of what I've written has been called offensive, <laughs> even racist, but I think these are strong terms. I think the term you're looking for is satire, and this is a, this is a dream I had, and it's called Gypsies in Space. <laughs> NASA has claimed it spotted knackers on Hubble. Stephen Hawking said, shit, we're in fucking trouble. Direct message to the human race, the tinkers are in outer space. <laughs> Weddings, fistfights, welfare on the moon, Down the snow lurchers in an Elvis tune. Polaris Milky Way kryptonite. The universe is one big halting sight. As a planet we cannot take any more, it's going to be a series on Channel 4. Thank you. <laughs> This is called Bag of Chips. Once upon a time, right, I was browsing online and I came across the following headline. Chips, what do you put on yours? It was accompanied by a map of these septic aisles, colour coded to describe what we choose to sprinkle on our fries. Blue for salt, green for cheese, black for local oddities like battered chips from the West Country. It got me to thinking about identity, about the role of the potato in Irish history, because truly I ask you, who were we before we embraced the sacred pra tea? That knobbly soil dweller, swelling with vigour, popular in Peru, where they use it to make stew. But who knew? I'm an Incan after all. How about you? And it's not just us. The Brits and the Scots, the rest of Europe love their spuds. We are members, are we not, of a tuberous sort of brotherhood? <laughs> and I know that monks and other crazy bastards lived off seal and oats out beyond the rocky blaskets, but that's so long ago now. It's easier for me to relate to a visit to the local chippy. The scalding cauldron of boiling oil, the white paper bags, the trays of foil, the stainless steel fluorescent lit under which the inscrutable chipper sits a basket of raw spuds to sizzle and spit. Ah, the humble chip. And yes, the Italians, and yes, the French, but we cherish chips to such an extent that we invented crisps. <laughs> Which brings me back to my original point, a map of these islands by condiment. To wit, what do you put upon your chips? Salt and vinegar, curry sauce, melted cheese, jalapenos, mustard, mayo, mushy peas. Well, you have to accommodate everybody. Fucking gravy. Now you're hungry. <laughs> so the next time you hold a single in your hands, or even a bag of cheese and onion, consider its origins in a faraway land and extrapolate, if you can, some metaphor for the everyman. Good. As a child growing up, I always used to wonder what did the Irish Armed Forces really do? Because like I used to like, just see them like minding cash vans and 
that was about fucking it, really. Just some of the mind fucking cash fans. So I wrote a poem about it. Irish soldier minding cash fan. Standing to attention, eyes looking around, ears pricked up, listening for sound. At any stage, getting ready to run, not trusted with bullets for your gun. The nation is satisfied and the uniform shows. We don't want you to blow off all your toes. I suppose it's cool, you look fairly hard. It beats the fuck out of being a guard. But rumours are flying and maybe you've heard. When you're on tour, other guys are shagging your bird. <laughs> Though if it really lifts off, you can kick back and snore. You signed up for neutrality, not the possibility of war. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I'm from uh, I'm from Offaly uh, originally, and uh, I'm a very proud Offaly man. Uh, living in in Skibbereen, and uh, when Barack Obama was uh, voted in, I, was, I would follow politics a lot. Politics was my passion. So when Barack Obama got got voted in in America, I was like, hope, change, you know, all that good shit. But it turns out he's a fucking asshole, right? <laughs> And next thing, all of a sudden, he fucking turns up in Offaly, right? In Moneygall, like where I'm from, going, this is my ancestral home, like the first black president of the United States, right? And everyone went, oh yeah, sure, Jesus, yeah, sure, the president of the United States, right? there has to be some Irish in him somewhere, like. But his father's from Kenya, right? And his mother is English. And he was born in Hawaii. So I'm not sure, like, where they got the connection. They had to go back like 200 years, 250 years to find a, you know, sort of convict that was like shipped off to the United States. To, this is how they traced his, his Irish lineage. And so this is called A Little Black Inside. So did anyone else feel strange or unease when Obama came to visit and we had to appease the big cheese of Israel's main squeeze? I started with myself, I just felt it odd that he proclaimed himself a son of the sod. So we're now brothers in bog. And someone examined the family log, and way out on a limb, on a twig, on a leaf, was a rare rattling old cousin that have his belief. <laughs> a carny from Offaly in America stood. Six generations later, bore his barrack by blood, but meanwhile, back in the hood, or Africa, as it's known these days, the cradle of the civilized free range slave, for sale by the bale to the land of the brave, picking cotton predating the minimum wage, the other side of his family tree was being made. So come back to the present, return to the now. How this makes some Irish dads? I just don't know how. And all of this fuss about Obama the Green. So he could have been a ginger child from a girl named Colleen with freckles, not shekels, in need of sunscreen. And is this a dream? Someone pinch me or poke me. I don't find this funny or remotely jokey that somehow Obama sure now be the hokies as Irish as me. And we all think this is okay. And this is not some sort of a racist attack. But for the love of Lord Jesus, lads, the man is black. <laughs> he is like. And he's Muslim by name, and he's Kenyan by nature, and he stands nearly six foot six in stature, and he's wearing the shamrock like he was conceived in a little thatched cottage, where he ate to live bereaved. But he must be in his grave turning. No home fires burning, that this once proud nation of education and learning proclaim this man the saviour, the one we've been yearning. But I sure. Isn't he one of us now? A God send a blessing. A divine cash cow. And don't be minding the stars and the blow. Now the trough is too barren for the boars and their sows. He's drinking a pint. Yes, we can. There you go. Just let it settle, Mr. President. It's tradition, you know. And he swallows the porter along with his pride. I just hope now he feels a little black inside. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> this is my last piece. Um, I also have a few books. If anybody's interested afterwards, uh, come up and see me. <laughs> um, yeah, I have a confession to make. I am not a poet. And I know it. I have the rejection letters to prove it. I'd like to share with you a letter I received recently from a publishing organisation. And it goes like this. <clears throat> Dear Mr. Brennan, thank you for submitting your work to our publication. We really enjoyed reading your uh, work. We particularly enjoyed the piece entitled Rejection. <laughs> How
However, we do not feel it is suitable for publication in our upcoming issue, but please do not be discouraged in the best of continued luck with your creative exploits, etc., etc., yours sincerely. So I'd like to perform a rejection for you this evening in the style of the late, great Rick Mayall's 1984 opus, Thatcher. So this is Rejection by Richard Brennan. Rejection! <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, this is my last moment. It's been an absolute pleasure to be here tonight to try and offend as many people as I can. But I don't think I've succeeded, but I'm gonna give it one last shot. <laughs> In 1974, I came to this universe from a faraway planet, and I was born in Northern Ireland, and then the Brits scared us out of Northern Ireland, and this is a true story, and I ended up living in Tullamore. And I was fed by successive carvery dinner establishments in the Midlands. And this is a tribute to the best of the lot, and it's the Bridge House carvery dinner. But if there's a carvery dinner place around here that's good, you can apply it to this poem. Bridge House carvery dinner. Bridge House carvery dinner, I fucking love you. <laughs> Bridge House Carvery Dinner, I really love you, motherfucker. <laughs> I fucking hope you do not stray, please don't fuck off far away, I lick the gravy off the tray. <laughs> Bridge House Carvery Dinner, you make me feel like such a winner, Wednesday is my fucking dull day, I idolise that rich fuck Christy May. He may be gone, but the food's top notch, I'd eat it out of an old man's crotch. <laughs> I'm talking about you, Bridge House Carver Dinner. Of course I want four types of spuds. I want roast. I want chips. I want mash. Garlic spuds, just a splash. You can always find a place to sit. It's the best jacks in Leap. Where are we? The, if it's the best jacks in Leap if you need a shit. Leap, leap, Bridge House Carver Dinner, I fucking love you. I really do. I frequent and haunt. I'm the local Carvery savant. You're always worth a jaunt. It doesn't matter that I cannot afford the beef. Give me the fucking volavant. Thank you! I'm here with Julie Goo. How's it going? Oh, good, thanks. Where did you get the name? I'm loving it. Ah, uh, well, Julie's my name. Yeah, good Goo. start. Yeah. <laughs> Goo is a nickname. Aw. So, From like brother's family or just Yeah, friends? one particular brother I've always been called Goo Goo. So, Aww. yeah, Julie Goo is just a nice. Uh, stage name, I suppose. Brilliant. Listen, tell me, what is your thing? What kind of spoken word do you do? Where do you get your inspiration from? Um, I'd say a lot of it's frustrations, you know, <laughs> general. Oh, my uh, sister. Yeah. The state of the nation, um, certain social issues, Great. gender issues, uh, and then some nice, <laughs> nice happy stuff as well. But a few rants in there maybe about eating habits of, you know, fast food and. Yeah. Uh, Pressures to conform, and yeah, there's a whole range of uh, rants in there. Brilliant stuff. But, uh, it's very therapeutic. Good. <laughs> Listen, when did you start doing this? Was this something you always did as a child, or did you suddenly discover, oh, I like this kind of thing? Yeah, well, I've always written, and I do lots of other stuff as well, but yeah. I suppose I discovered spoken word about five years ago, just through Oveil, a poetry night in Cork City that I go to. Okay, when's um, that on? That's on Monday nights. Monday nights, uh, guys. Check out www.oveil.ie and a fantastic poetry night and uh, yeah through going there I discovered spoken word I discovered that yeah I'm handy enough for this it's something I felt comfortable doing something I enjoyed and Jesus I mean in the last year alone I've just done fantastic stuff but I've, got, I've gotten to really interesting places and made yeah. some brilliant friends and it's a bit of crack absolutely yeah. do you think it's a form of poetry is or of, of therapy for you absolutely. poetic therapy let's call it yeah but like I, I'd hate to think you know I'm not just offloading on the audience I get a nice reaction do you know Great. what I mean yeah um, and yeah I, I really get a lovely and that's what keeps me doing it you know because yeah. I do as I said I do other stuff as well and but I just get such a lovely reaction from people after performing I say, should I be stupid enough to stop this, you know? Oh, you're dead right. Do something yeah. you love and keep yeah, doing it as well. Yeah, yeah. So is this your first time here tonight or no, have you been uh, before? I would have gone to gigs here a long time yeah. ago. It's a great venue, um, isn't it? Like, wow. Yeah. yeah, it's great. Look I mean, at this. It's, it's, it's so good, like, in Cork City about 15 years ago, like, there'd be buses going from the city. We're an hour and a half from the city, like, great. and the buses would fill up. Yeah. for people going to comedies of left down to gigs. Like. There you go. Some fantastic nights. And it's a great start, isn't it? Having something poetic, something where yeah. you can express yourself. Yeah. And it doesn't have to have music in the background at all. No, no, no. no. That's a good thing to do. Are there many women women doing what you do? Um, 
Oh, well, there's Jeff the race. You would probably be roughly, I'd say, five to one, you know, men to women. So it's obviously a, more of a male. I'm going to start. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that doesn't bother me. You know? yeah. I think anyone who wants to do it does it. There's nothing right. stopping you. So. You it's know. the creative instinct, I think, yeah, as well. Yeah, and, you're and you have to have confidence as well, I suppose. Oh, you know. oodles of that. Really? Yeah, I'm totally. Good at, I'm good at pretending you do. Yeah, you do. You're doing great. I'm looking forward to hearing you later on. Thank you. And I appreciate you taking time. I know you want to get ready and probably get in the zone oh, to yeah. perform later on. A few points. Yeah, yeah a few points. <laughs> I'm not going to drink. Later. <laughs> thanks very much. Okay, thanks, man. Bus from Cork City. About 17 years ago, coming down for gigs in Lep. I had many a good night here, so I was really excited about coming. So excited, I kind of overlooked the fact I was actually going to be on stage. <laughs> so bear with me. Um, I'm going to start with a poem called uh, But the Irish Language is Dead. I spent several years arsing around as a postgraduate study in um, Unrai New Gaelga in the Department of Modern Irish in UCC. And uh, throughout the course of that study, you know, you'd meet people, you'd be coming up in conversation, oh, what are you doing? Oh yeah, and doing postgrad in uh, Irish there, and people's reactions were, were hilarious. Like a lot of people were just bamboozled. They're like, "You're what? This is the boom now, the Celtic Tiger. You're you're in college studying Irish. What the fuck are you going to do with that? Like, do you know what I mean?" So I had to write this piece, and it's called "But the Irish Language Is Dead." But the Irish language is dead. You casually said, while sweeping a hair from your face. You seem perplexed to learn of my postgraduate studies in Gaelic. I look to the sky, hoping to summon a response, one which would articulate the intimate relationship my soul has with my mother tongue. Although my mother did not speak Irish well, one could tell through her use of the habitual present as she'd be talking away about her day that her ancestors spoke Irish. What use is it to you? You continue. My gaze is drawn to the street name fastened to the wall above the chip upon your shoulder. Lips pressed together, my tongue dances the words shoe lodge on the lower walk of the lepers. Three Gaelic words so modestly disclosing to me forgotten history, walk of the lepers. I imagine them shuffling their way to the river to bathe lumpy limbs. The anglicised version paints a different picture, however, as it declares we stand and lovers walk. Clearly, lepers were abandoned in translation and lovers lived happily ever after. You joke that we're getting old. I decide to share with you linguistic gold, a tiacht, chanifer fochta, describing the process of ageing not as decaying, but as coming into perfection. I see the reflection of the sun in your eyes as we say our goodbyes. Leper-shaped clouds form in the sky. Grimanagov. To get through, and he was quite unlucky. He was actually the very, very first person up out of a group of about 20 people. And I think you're really, really going to enjoy what he does. He's a spiritual deep thinker. He is a rapper and a successful battle rapper, or a rap battler, <laughs> a rapper battler, <laughs> so please put your hands together and give a warm welcome to Mr. David Jackson, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Hello, hello. <clears throat> so, um, so the first piece I'm going to do tonight, um, I only finished it during the week, so it's really fresh in my head. So my logic is, if I do this and fuck it up, then it's only, you know, gets better from here on in. Like, so so um, the, the few people mentioned tonight about the 1916 Rising, and you know that's kind of like a theme this year with the anniversary. And I don't know if this is, that's why I started writing this, but as I was writing it, it kind of came into my head. and. The whole thing with the rising was that it was it was about revolution, you know, but the word revolution is re-evolution, you know, it's to re-evolve. It's it's like when you've hit a cul-de-sac in in culture or whatever, and you have to you have to be like, okay, we have to do something, and then you change it around. And I think you know we're at this stage again, where we're 
we need to we need revolution or we need to re-evolve. So this piece is just about you know what is that next step? You know back then it was about getting Ireland as a country and independence. Now what is our next step as a country and as a people worldwide? You know. Uh, so this is called the next step. So. <clears throat> Before I drop a rhyme that could reach the masses, I breathe bone deep till the chi gets captured. Prevoke speech that is intergalactic, transmitted back through an Irish accent. The indigo iris is live and active on the green isles of the island Atlantis. I look to the past just to try to get access to the ancestors to pass us advancements, enhancing our talents as masters of magic. We each have the chance to be a color on the canvas. I ask to discover which brush touched my palette. I ask, show me how to move past this point that I'm standing. How to drop our baggage from the past we are handling. I no longer want to drag it on physical travels. I'd rather sit on dragons and visit the astral. No longer life in three dimensions. My soul longs for stronger connections. I know there's no wrongs, only perceptions. I know there's photons unfolding perfection. I'm recoding genetic expression. A star seed sown in the depths of ascension. Crept from the crevice where the shadows had kept him and stretched to the level of self-acceptance. I see myself as a selfless presence. I'm not a shell of a man. This man is the shell that I'm dressed in. My pure essence has no edges. I'm less separate than I am connected. It's less effort to spread this message than it is to live in the head that gets it. But still, I feel gifted enough and real strong in myself to reach out for your help to keep lifting us up. Most scars that my heart has felt were cut from sharp edges of my own neglect. Those who control are not owed respect. We're not something to be sold. We are soul itself. That's why I don't spit rhymes anymore. I speak with the rhythm that shines from the north to the south of my spine in alignment with source. I find violence silently ignored in opposite environments conducive to war. But the truth is we choose this. Are you a victim of life or do you have life and abuse it? The guns that fling bullets are bullies that live long. They only pull it looking for something to cling on. So how will you manage when you were being challenged and asked to stand in a place where everything's collapsing? Will you pray for the pain to be vanquished or embrace what is happening as change being granted after you have asked it? This is what I'm asking. This is only 10% what I imagine. The other 90% is essentially madness because 90% of listeners can't grasp it. When life timbers and falls like Atlantis, you may find the splinters are intergalactic. You won't get injured except in the access to enter your parallel dimensional address. We'll be like, hashtag having a laugh, traveling to the past. The future was a blast, but now I'm headed back to the present. I was sold on this place before they developed it as a meditative state for your brainwaves etiquette. This is what music is to medicine, Tesla to Edison, revolution to renaissance. Ever since I engaged the elephant in the room, I elevated from the cocoon of elements that kept me entombed like a raider. But now I'm in tune with greater pursuits for evidence of the truth that is yet to be proved. I move between fact and fiction, future and past, till at last a place without distance. Viewed remotely with shamanic vision, I should quote what I write because most of it's given. Most of what I write is for those without limits, who reached for the sky just to see that it's lifted beyond the position it was originally fixed in. Beyond the position it was originally fixed in. Because I see no difference, I see no distance between you and I and everything in existence. I am the mirror image of your own inner mystic. You chose me to depict it. When you were invoking assistance, I was knee deep, scribbling descriptives, trying to transfigure your hopes and your wishes while figuring out the quickest route to encrypt it with a rhyme that would bypass your resistance. This is a gift that I'm given for the times that we live in. 
Because there are those who have tried to put the steel pole in your spine, controlling your mind to mold another soldier in line. But this is the truth that they withhold and they hide. You are a soul that's divine. You are known by the cosmos and your name is in light. Don't believe your perceptions. You exist in more dimensions than you perceive with your senses. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it at that. So what's the next step of ascension? I think there's like a paragraph more, but again, I only finished it during the week, so it's, it's pretty rough, so hopefully upward from here. <laughs> Again, and this is Connolly's of LEP in County Cork. I'm very excited because I keep meeting all these amazing, fabulous people, and one of which is this gorgeous girl beside me, Miss Davina Brady. Right. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good build, wasn't it? We're doing all right. Yeah, it did okay. Come here. It's all the way from Dublin yeah. down to Cork, especially yeah. to do this gig. Yeah. Why? Tell me. What's a inspiring you? Cormac. Cormac? Yeah. Cormac is a lovely person, the person who organised it. Um, that's the main thing, and it was yeah. an opportunity to come down to. I quite like it down here, so. And you're you're doing loads with your music, aren't you? Really, as well. You have your own band. I play a lot. Tell yeah. us about that. Um, there's five of us. Um, it's taken a couple of years to kind of get to where we are now, but we're to be honest, we're just happy to be with each other. That Aww. doesn't sound too ridiculous. Oh, it's a lovely uh, thing. But yeah, no, we've totally are um, just getting to know each other and getting to just learn musically together. We're, you know, so we're parting along, kind of learning. Well, you know, regardless of what happens, we're learning. Well, you know <laughs> something, nice that's a great philosophy because, you know, you hit my radar a while ago, your music, okay. and I absolutely loved it because there's very few female musicians and singers in Ireland that I think hit the bar. And I think, you know, your humbleness is lovely, mm -hmm. but your talent is great as well. So I'm looking forward to hearing you later on because you've got awesome vocals. Oh, oh, kind of thing. Yeah, it's good. And listen, when did you start all this? It was Sing, something. Singing? You know? Yeah. I don't I think I was singing a share song when I was a kid, and my mum and my sister like, what the fuck was that? Yeah. Excuse yeah. language, I'm petty. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's where it started. That's totally where it started. Brilliant. I just kept singing and went in and out at about four, age 14 and started writing because I didn't want to be singing other people's songs. Yeah. Then I stopped for a few years, and then the last five years it started again. Brilliant. Where would you like to go from here? I mean, is there like a plan, or are you just enjoying the process? like? The musical uh, journey. The music's just part of my personal growth. Yeah. Not much more, yeah. to be honest. It's, it's me, you know, so yeah. as long as I can keep being me, that's where the music will go. And you, do you think it's hard in Ireland to be a female in the industry, or do you see any difference at all the way that your journey is evolving? I, uh, Ireland, as an industry of music, it's more of a machine of music. I think there's just yeah. too much, personally. Okay. Um, I think if we really wanted to get serious about it, we'd have to leave Ireland. And that's, yeah. It's a sad thing, but I think we would have to, you know, it's, it's yeah. too too diluted, it's too much, too much almost, yeah. in Ireland. You know? It's condensed, is that true? It's not necessarily a mad woman thing or anything to do with that, it's just, it's just a lot. Yeah, of people do. I think thing, you're you right. Know? I think yeah. Ireland is a chock block with talent, yeah, and for a small country, yeah. it's insane. Yeah. So I do agree with you. Mm. But I can see a resurgence in the industry as well, where you yeah. know the opportunities are open, the venues are opening more, and mm. people also I think are getting past the struggles that were there maybe in the you know the times of the recession. Mm. All right, we're not out of it completely, mm. but there's a lot of talent in Ireland. Oh, there's, there's, there's a, there is a lot. There is a definitely a hundred. Definitely a lot. There's not enough people saying that. Living from it, you know, you're so. one of the great talents, I think. Uh, yeah, of the women Lucky. that I've seen in the country at the moment. So. Very, <laughs> very humble so. girl. I love this. I don't know who else is humble. <laughs> I am, of course. But listen, I'm looking forward to hearing what you have for your set later on. So it's great to be such a place. What Isn't it brilliant? Place. It's, what it's insane. Of course, we have it's a really great a uh, cameraman here. here. Thank yeah. you very much for taking the shots. But look, um, We'll be hearing more about you. People can go online, they can check your band out, check yeah. you out. Where's the next gig? Are you gigging next or? Where are we gigging next? Like I'm, I'm doing something for, what the fuck's it called? Eastern five Lamps, oh, yeah, yeah. something for Five Lamps. Yeah, it's each oh, East oh, 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 Rising. Um, as a band wise, I suppose, we're just, we're making a set bigger and we're kind of okay. looking at touring um, UK in the summer, so kind of that's where our heads at. So it's Davina and the Messenger? Davina and the Messenger. Great yeah. stuff, guys, check them out. I think they're brilliant. And um, I'm looking forward to hearing the set later. Oh, well, Davina's anyway. Yeah. And at some stage, we're going to catch the band too. Probably in Dublin. Do you think you bring the boys down here as well? Boy and girl, to, boys and girl. To be honest, just the minute I walked in, I was like, oh, it'd be amazing to come down with the lads and it's really hang good. out here for the weekend, you know. And yeah. I just want a helicopter. Oh, no, I'd be suggesting. Could hey. definitely hey. suggest before I leave. Any chance for gig? Yeah. Oh, you will. No yeah. doubt. After they hear you tonight, I'm sure it's going to be great. See. See. Thank See. you so much. <laughs> it's all good. You're a star. Yeah, have a good night. Um, I, I am 
back. I actually came from Dublin. Don't tell them. But I am from Wexford. I am from Wexford. Um, it's a lovely place. Cork, it's a lovely place. Um, it's just c- kind of saying it was that it was them. Um, Kerry in West Cork, um, September just gone, and uh, it's it's a, it's a free place. Like you know, you're all very lucky to be here and live here. Um, maybe one day I might make the move myself, but there's definitely a sense of freedom down here, you know. And I cherish that <laughs> from the bottom of your bottom of your heart. So I, I'm gonna play a couple of songs. I'm gonna I suppose. Usually I'm playing playing a band lately, so uh, I have this opportunity to just play by myself. So I'm gonna I suppose I'm gonna play with that. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. So I'll buzz in and out the piano, but um, I'll do a well since it's kind of essentially spoken word. I'll do a spoken word or slash rap kind of buzz, um, and maybe an acapella one as well, which would be really cool. Um, but yeah, thanks again. So I'm gonna do four tracks. Cut, um, if I'm too long, Gorman, <laughs> just give me a shout. <laughs> Any sound? Um, oh, there you are. Yeah, let us know. Uh, this first one's called What I'm Feeling. Julie, I'm lucky we always take a soup <laughs> in between. <laughs> there you are. I'm a fucker for
schön, gerade ganz schön. Ja, das Blumen sein immer. Poetry Slam competition winner, Mr. John Cummins. How are you doing? How does somebody become an All-Ireland Slam winner? <laughs> and what is it? Tell me about it. Okay. It's poetry, is it? It's poetry, yeah. Okay. So I don't know how the judges do the judging, but they'll just be judging. Judging? And it's three minutes. It's learn your palm off by heart. And up you go, and it's very, it's growing. I've been doing it about five years, six. Cool. And listen now, when you say three minutes, is that like three minutes or is there a big clock at the wall? Because I would have to have a clock where yeah. I see the tick, tick, tick and then I know stop. That's good. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's, a, there's this uh, a night uh, called Slam Sunday yeah. and that's a regular slam that uh, is very popular in Axon's Cafe. Cool. And uh, they have a lovely little system where they put cards, different look. Yeah. I can't remember like so and so's 30 seconds. So, oh. so that's a good thing. Isn't yeah, it? I, I would need that yes. definitely because if you get, leave me talking, yeah. I'll run over. And then I was taking part in the slam, we, uh, the last one I took part in, and there was a clock. And I went over the clock, and the way I kind of had experienced it before, they kind of dock your points if you Yeah, take two. your points off, right. This okay. particular one, I got ejected for paid. You are kidding me. I'm not. The World Global yeah, no. University Challenge. <laughs> no, but it happened. Uh, seriously? Yeah. So, okay. I know that there's uh, going to be loads of slams this year. There's people organising. There's actually a slam tonight in Dublin now in Hope, which is great, you know. I was aware of that. Right. And the uh, universities and colleges are setting up little slams where they have a little goof against each other and all that, yeah. Great, so, it's good, yeah. so where did you get your confidence to actually get up there and do your <laughs> material? Was that like just in you? Were you that kind of child or did you just discover no, it? No, yeah, the total opposite, yeah. as you say. I played football for a long time, so that was what I used to do in public. And I used to Ga work. or soccer? soccer now when you say football. Soccer ball. Soccer ball. Like the boy <laughs> thing. Uh, and the poetry thing it took me a long, long time to... Too long, but like, ridiculous amount of time to go and do it. Everything happens in its own time, yeah. isn't that what they say? Yeah, yeah. Allegedly. So, yeah. <laughs> so tonight yeah. we're in Connolly's of Lep yes, in Cork. It? Yeah, yeah. It's a great venue. Yeah. Fantastic. What do you bring to the table? What's your kind of <laughs> stick? Stick? <laughs> What's your stick? I don't know. Um, bring a few love poems for a walk, maybe. You know what I, mean? I love love poems. Yeah, so I think that, that's it. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. It's a really eclectic mix tonight, isn't it, really? Yeah, absolutely. There's nobody really doing the same thing. No, but that's the thing, you know. Uh, it's grown in popularity. Like, for example, Five years ago, I took part in the Leinster version of the Slam, and maybe six people took part in it. This year, there was like uh, several Slams around Leinster and several Slams around Ulster to get each provincial champion. You know what I mean? So it really has grown. People can get out there and just do it. Great stuff. Yeah. So, do you think somebody like me, who might be a closet poet, yeah, could do something <laughs> like that? Absolutely. Oh, that's Thousands, good to hear. Bajillion percent. Do you think it's in the Irish gene pool that we have some creative yeah. instinct in us yeah. that needs to be expressed somehow? It's, yeah, and there's an appetite for it as well. There's an appetite, it works both ways. There's a huge appetite for uh, people to listen. You know yeah. what I mean? So when that, that yeah. experience is shared, it's, it's lovely, you know, that's, that's what it's all about. Isn't it? And I think also as well, maybe there's an empathy where somebody can express something yep. that's going inside yeah. of you. Yeah. But you can listen to it and somehow it's this cleansing yeah. ritual that happens yeah. as well. Yeah, and, uh, yeah absolutely well said. And, uh, Thank you. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, I suppose people say, well, it takes a lot of courage to get up there. It's, yeah. I suppose it, it does. Hard neck. Just do believe yeah. in what you've got to, to share and share. And he's probably beautifully, pleasantly surprised that, uh, you know, there's people listening and, and willing and encouragement is, is, is everywhere. Look, you know? Brilliant. Well, you know you're a good advocate for that kind of thing. So. <laughs> Thank you so much for You're chatting. Welcome. Enjoy welcome. yourself tonight. Thank I'm looking you. forward to it. Me too. And thanks for having the chat. Thank Mr. John Cummins, the World Global <laughs> Intergalactical <laughs> Challenge, a slam competition winner. Thank you very much. We were on the Please, guys, put your hands together for a big under the hammers welcome uh, for Mr. John Cummins. We're right to say leap. <laughs> Would you say lep? Leap. 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 Leap.
If I said Jesus, would you say wept? Jesus. Wept. Leap. Yeah. Jesus. Wept. <laughs> Hello. How that be your listening parts? I is up the pen gauging some even more page to stage spoken word arts. How that be your listening bits? Are you in good wits or secretly off ya? <laughs> no, I don't want to do you as the servits, but I'd be lying if I didn't say I wasn't a tad near vits. Yesterday, Dublin to Clana Kilte. Today, Clana Kilte to the Connolly. This is where I'm from. My roots, my ground. This be where me be born and me toward oil fields bound to the concrete of a corner gaff. And I'm sound with the coastline even in a photoshopped photograph. And I'm linked to the famine and I'm part of the boom. And I've tasted the salmon and I've prayed to the moon. And I'm tied to the chestnuts, the sycamore tree. Tied to the state and its scaremongery. Oh, this is where I'm from. My stem, my sky, my once upon, my amen, my reason why I feel bound to the beg of a street orchard, sound slow snogging at the hippie hop lurching and I'm linked to the viking and part of the rising of tasted the biting and sampled down sizing and I'm tied to the ink in the proclamation I'm tied to the emmy and the migration I'm tied to the car of a civil rights struggle I am tied to the car of a Moor Street haggle it is my street it's your street not the high street Moor Street it's a fruit and veg fish and flower street Moor Street our street this is where I'm from, my soil, my space, my sky, my stem, my time, my place, and I am bound to its bark, bound to its brick. Sound as a pound when I'm taking the mick and I'm linked to the Brits, part of the Gaeltock, taste the mitts and I've learned me mocha lock. And I'm tied to the source of a Shanachie story. Tied to its source, to its roots, to its core me. I'm tied to the source of bardic treat. Tied to its source, to its core, to its root. I am tied to the source of an illin pipe. Tied to the source of a, another abandoned building site. I'm tied to the source of a loved one on a hospital trolley. I'm tied to the source of Ronnie Whelan's fluky volley <laughs> Ireland, Air, emerald oil, you lived at large, now recharge that mobile.